What's going on everybody, it's Brian Tripp. I'm here in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. So glad you decided to join us today for another episode of the Alleria Masterclass Podcast, the Alabama Real Estate Investor Association Podcast. We uh, like to get on a lot of local guests to the state of Alabama. Sometimes we get on some national guests that can give us some good perspective on real estate and real estate investing from a, kind of a national stage. But today, we have someone who lives in Birmingham and is kind of known nationally. Mr. Nelson Nash is with us, the founder of the Infinite Banking Concept. How are you doing today, Nelson? Doing great, but it's not nationally, it's internationally. Internationally, <laughs> man, I get corrected. I, I have a feeling I'm gonna get corrected a lot today <laughs> during this show, but that's great internationally known infinite banking concept let's just start start right there what is infinite banking oh my word how you just how do you describe infinite you can't <laughs> it's, it's endless it's a discovery process that builds on itself as time goes by and you see things that you didn't see before and that will recur all your life if you uh, get the concept so let's just break it down for someone who's never heard of this before. Mm -hmm. um, you start talking about infinite banking concept. Um, it's obviously tied to whole life insurance. That's yeah. the vehicle, yeah. That's the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So just, I guess just start us at the elementary level. What, you know, you talk, start talking about infinite banking. What does that really mean though? I know you said infinite can mean it can go on and on, but really at the elementary level, someone who's never heard of this before, how would you describe this? Well, banking is. It's something that uh, we can't live without. Uh, we, we could never enjoy the standard of living that we enjoy today without the concept of banking. Someone is going to be the bank, the banker. Well, what is a bank? That's nothing but an aggregation of whatever you deal with. Uh, a uh, Walmart is a bank, uh, the bank of merchandise and so forth. Hmm. Uh, my uh, backdoor neighbor is a retired uh, ur urologist and uh, he's a frustrated farmer. He's into roses big time. But, uh, all right, so he got me uh, uh, involved with his roses business and so forth with a, a joint project and so forth. Well, now look, uh, have you ever been rose, around rose folks? No, I haven't. Uh, they're, they're different. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are they're totally different. I can't go into them with the limited time we have now, but you gotta have some special soil, okay? Well, you got to go to where there's an accumulation of that. Well, that's a bank. Now, okay. uh, all right, so they load up a uh, truck uh, over and bring it over to our place, and the guy dumps it on this uh, side of the, uh, uh, the, the sidewalk there. All right, now that's a bank. Now, it's not where I want it, we want it to be. There's got to be in this confined place that we've got stones uh, to make the bed. All right, so banking is everything that you do out there. Well, the banking function is relates it relates to money. It's in the hands of the wrong people. What does that mean? They're evil. Uh, bankers cause war. I'm not talking about uh, the guy you see down at the uh, local bank here. Uh, somebody says I'm gonna go see my banker. No, you're not seeing a banker. You're seeing a gopher who worked at the bank. Right. All right. Now, uh, the, the bankers that we're talking about are puppet masters that are behind the scene that you don't see. Right. And uh, the, talk, talk about that for a second, Nelson. The puppet masters behind the scenes. Like, what, what, would, what are they doing to make you describe them as such? They cause wars and they finance both then? sides. What, what do you mean they're causing wars? Like, I'm, I'm just trying to understand this kind of at the elementary level. Well, I told you this is infinite that you got to do some severe we're studying. We're trying to dig, yeah, right. we're, well, we're that, digging. That's on my, uh, on my uh, reading list in uh, my website, infinitebanking.org, uh, there's about 385 books there, and uh, there are more on history than anything else. But uh, uh, seeing the history of the banking business and what went on, is extremely important because it affects our lives so greatly. Right. But people do not, uh, they're not aware of it at all. And it's because of the methodology that these folks use. You see, banks more, make more money off of wars than any other way. Uh, they create the wars and they finance both sides so that they can't possibly lose. But the, most people are never aware of that. 
Well, you can take that function away uh, and have it at U and V level. All the banking functions should be at the U and V level. And so when I discovered this uh, concept uh, well, about 35 years ago or so, uh, implementing it in my own life, uh, my wife and I have not seen a bank in over uh, 30 years. A traditional bank. Yeah. So when you say it needs to be at the you and me level, what you're saying is, I mean, you describe it as like being your own banker. Sure. So what what is that? Just, again, just for the person that I, I have a I have an okay understanding of it, but for the person that's never heard of what you're talking about before, what is like to be your own banker? The bank is kind of at the local level, the me and you level. That's where the level it should be at. Mm -hmm. Describe that. What does that mean? Well, that's such a foreign idea to the kind of person that you're just talking about right. that it's almost impossible to find a place to start. This has got to be a discovery process of their own where they see a little glimmer of it and then they uh, make, maybe get interested in it and then they look a, bit, look a little bit more and they keep discovering that uh, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and they find out that uh, the world is just going about things exactly backward. Right. But it all... Uh, revolves around the concept of money and who right. is the banker in your life. Right. Somebody is going to be the banker and it should be you, but that's not understood at all out there. For sure. Well, how in the world do you explain something to somebody that is such a foreign idea? But yeah, right. that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> well, uh, you, you can't. It, like I say, it is a discovery process. And uh, quite frankly, uh, trying to inject this into somebody's head is absolutely worthless. But you see, again, uh, the bankers control uh, the, uh, a lot of things out there. They control the media totally. Uh, they control the educational system and so forth. And you see, as a result of uh, our educational system out there, what it amounts to, Brown, is uh, let's put this straight jacket on you. Let me tie your ankles and, uh, with a chain and so forth. Now hold real still while I inject this into your brain with this thin needle. Uh, that's absurd. Uh, that won't work. But yet, that's what we've got going on. I totally agree with everything you're saying. Good. How can how can so, there's got to be a beginning process to this discovery process to learn just really. Honestly, what it is is just a foreign idea. It's an idea that's sure. just kind of foreign to our, well, our that's, nature. See, that's why I wrote the book uh, back there uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, when I first discovered this, I was trying to get the uh, message done through seminars and uh, in a two, a two and a half hour time frame, and there's no way that it can be done. But yet I was going through that same process uh, like uh, it's taught in uh, the general uh, business world, right. particularly the life insurance business. Uh, we got to have a nugget here that you, you know, take this pill and you will understand. And there's no way. Well, uh, I had this fantastic experience years ago uh, with a fellow named Larry Wilson, Wilson Learning Co uh, Corporation, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Now, Larry was an interesting fellow, Brian. Uh, he was a school teacher had a real bad habit of spending 1.25 times the income. Mm -hmm. had, had to find something else to do. Mm -hmm. Got in the life insurance business, did extremely well. Uh, he, uh, but it bugged him. He couldn't explain why was he good. He called himself an unconscious competent. And although he had four kids at the time, uh, he uh, said, I'm gonna find out why am I good. Now, uh, when you start searching, magic appears. Uh, in the scriptures it says, uh, seek and you shall find. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. You'll find the answers are out there almost for the asking. Now, yeah, but you also go run into another phenomenon that you didn't understand, and that's synergism. It's what is it? Synergism. Synergism. You'll run into people that were looking for you more than you were looking for them. Like a synergy. Yeah. Now, in the process of him uh, searching, he ran across uh, Bank of America, who was looking for somebody to put together a sales training package for their bank. And that's how Council of Selling was born. It was a 40-hour block of instruction designed to be put on four hours at a time over a 10-week period. And so I saw that I had to uh, 
rework uh, the uh, seminar and uh, uh, the, the course. I had to right. put it into five parts of two hours each. And then I had a test group that I put together, 18 people, that's how big a conference room uh, uh, accommodated. And uh, I had uh, one person who was 25, another one who was 75, there were males and females, all kind of different occupations, and I wouldn't let but one life insurance guy in the room. All right, now, uh, I got through the, uh, the uh, first session, 60% uh, of them hung around and wanted to ask questions. My answer, go home. It's over. Uh, I'll be here at uh, 6 o'clock next Thursday night. Now, Brian, I don't know whether you've had this kind of problem or not, trying to get groups together and so forth, but I understand that that's the sort of stuff that you do. Uh, all right, so uh, I uh, had uh, got, uh, back when I was trying to get the two hour Shucks, get everything done in two and a half hours. Right. Uh, there were many times where uh, I uh, got uh, a, a group of about 40 people and called them down to about 20 and said, uh, now, uh, 6 o'clock Thursday night, we're going to start. Well, I would call all of them at 4 o'clock to make sure that they were going to be there, and they always should be they were going to be there. Right. But something happened between 4 and 6. Right. I'm aware. And there were times. There were times when no one showed up. Been there. All right. Been there. Done that. Got the t-shirt. Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, so I remember they did not call any of them uh, to remind them to come with that second session. Twenty people showed up. Mm. Wasn't the same eighteen people, but several uh, said, uh, "Hey, you got to hear this," and they brought friends. Yeah. Well, by the time we got through. Um, uh, the third session, uh, they were saying, you need to write a book. Mm -hmm. You need to write a book. <laughs> and so that led to becoming your own banker. So you remember Paul Harvey? You, you're too young. Paul, to now you Paul know, Harvey. Now you know the rest There's of the, the story. story. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. So let, the book, let's talk about the book for a second. Sure. It's Becoming Your Own Banker. Yeah. Um, I've read this. I've read this through twice now, and it's 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 one of those books that you can't really read one time. No. You can't really, like you were talking about earlier. It's it's kind of an infinite process. It's a process. Sure. You have to try to. You have to get to know it. A couple of passages, not passages, but a couple of things you wrote in that book that really struck me that I want to kind of read. Mm. Um, one in particular, I just want you to talk about this, and you've already kind of alluded to this, mm. that banking is a process, yes. not a product. Sure. And you've already kind of talked about this a little bit, but we think, I think the normal person thinks that banking is a product. Sure, that's, but, our that's what our educational system teaches. Right, but you say it's not. You say no. it's a process. No. A process, would, that, that means, to me, that means that it's kind of an ongoing thing. Sure, it keep... has to do with cash flow. It's all about cash flow. So talk it. about that for a second. Well, uh, you go earn uh, some money. Well, uh, you, where do you put it? Uh, now, uh, it comes to you in the form of check or cash, right? Uh, electronics. So, uh, sure. Yeah. Now, where does it go, Brian? Yeah. Huh? That's a, a, a where question it, I've thought where, about where many, does, many times. Where does it go first? I don't know where it goes. No, you do too. It goes to somebody else's bank. <laughs> you put all the money that you, your cash flow, you put it all in somebody else's bank. Okay. And then you write checks out the other side of it. Yes. Well, they get all your money. Now, if you Correct. if you owned a banking system, would you run all your money through your system? I would hope so. Well, my <laughs> wife and I haven't seen a bank in the over thirty. A traditional years. bank. Yeah. Now, checking accounts are is not banking. Banking is about loans. Correct. And you, oh, anybody ought to know that because yes. of your background about real estate and so forth. Uh, if it, uh, okay. Uh, if you're going to have a transaction out there, that's got to be a full of a, a great big chunk of money in most people's lives compared with everything else that they do. All right, they don't own the bank and so forth. Well, uh, in my own family, and uh, uh, we have three children, uh, 10 grandchildren, eight great-grands, and a ninth one on the way. Uh, now, uh, 
money has not left our family uh, in uh, about 30 years. So when you say something like that, that's just like, I don't know if, if, you, if the audience, if you guys just actually caught that, what Nelson just said, because that sh should strike a lot of people, that money has not left your family, no. which means it's not going into a bank, a traditional well, bank. Well, you gotta understand this. Uh, see, most folks don't know about the, uh, the biggest race riot that ever occurred in America. Do you know anything about it? Race riot? Yes. Well, we're yes. talking about Tulsa, Oklahoma, 1923. There was a black community there that was about 50 blocks long. It was known as the Black Wall Street of America. Uh, they were relatively uh, wealthy people. Well, uh, can you imagine what it was like in 1923 at uh, here's poor white trash uh, uh, seeing these wealthy black folks? Uh, now, you know the Tenth Commandment? I don't know of an order, man. Well, the wow. One, the tenth one is the most insidious one of all, really, because uh, it has to do with uh, thou shalt not cut it. Okay. Lusting after somebody else's stuff. Right. Now, have you ever noticed that when the haves and the have-nots are out there that the, the have-nots don't want to build themselves up? They want to tear the haves That's right. down. That's right. It's always there because that's what the Tenth Commandment is all about. Yeah. All right, so can you imagine, imagine the animosity that was there? Okay. Now, there were very few places in Tulsa, Oklahoma at that time that a uh, black guy could go to a public restroom. And one of them was on the seventh floor of a high-rise building. Now, uh, it, this is gonna be real strange to you, but do, we did not have a push-button elevators in 1923. We had elevator operators, okay? Okay. Now, what is the pay scale of an elevator operator? Come on. Probably not very much. No. Right. Now, can you visualize a, uh, a young white girl being an uh, elevator operator? Um, I kind of see where you're going with this. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so here's this black guy that gets on the elevator and uh, there's just the two of them. Now, uh, by the time they reach the seventh floor, uh, she's screaming. And you don't know what happened between floor one and floor seven. Right. And I don't even think, nor does, any, nor does anybody else. But I do know something about human nature. This is a way to get, to bring those folks down to, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, that ignited the fuse to the biggest keg of dynamite you've ever seen. Over 300 people were uh, killed. They used American airplanes to bomb the place. Mm. If you see the pictures, uh, it, was, it was like Syria. All right, now people fixate on how, what a tragedy that was. But you see, they never get around to figure out the, how did this occur? What caused this and so forth? All right, uh, here's the wealthy, the black folks. Now what is not known that people don't talk about is that money turned over 30 to set to 100 times before it ever left the community. It didn't leave the community. Now, Paul Cleveland is a great uh, Austrian economist here at Birmingham Southern. Now, there's a video out there called Banking with Life, and uh, Paul is describing that wealth is not money. Wealth is goods and services. Mm. Money is the medium of exchange whereby we acquire wealth. All right, now if you accept that, is that pretty good? Is that does that register? All right, okay, it's registered. Right, so I can start all right, to. All right, so here's this black guy that's got something to sell. Right. There's another black guy that uh, would like to buy that. All right. Now uh, they strike a uh, uh, an understanding of uh, a value there, and uh, now what? 99.9% um, .9 of the people do not understand out there today is that there is real money in, in, in circulation and there is funny money in circulation. It's fiat money, okay? Most of it is the latter. It's, there's nothing to back it up at all. Right. All right, now, uh, in this case of the black guy buying something, what did he give the guy who was selling? He gave him a token of value there. Well, how did he get that uh, token in the first place? He pr provided goods and services to somebody else. 
Now, in every one of those cases, both parties won, didn't they? Yeah. Sounds like, yeah. Well, look on. Otherwise, the transaction wouldn't take place. Right. All right, so money never left the community. Gotcha. All right, there was practicing what we've been teaching, you see. Within my family, uh, money has never left the community for over 30 years. Gotcha. Through this infinite banking, become sure. your own banker sure. process, I do want to kind of, I want to talk about, go back. Let's go back. All right, and I want to talk about the origins, not, not, <laughs> not too far, but I want to go back to how you discovered this. How <sighs> this, like, because I was reading in your book where you, interest rates were going way, way up. Mm -hmm. You couldn't afford to make some payments on um, some real estate that you had bought because the because the interest rates had gone sky high. I'm assuming it's some sort of adjustable rate I mean, uh, loan or mortgage. Yeah. Are you aware of uh, my background is in education, that I'm a forester by education? That's what I'm getting to that. All right, now timber is real estate. Correct. I've been around real estate all my life. Right. And I indulged, all right? Now, I mostly got involved uh, in uh, Timberlands because that's something I knew something about. Right. All right, but uh, here comes the idea of development real estate, and so uh, I got involved in that, and there were several successful uh, ventures and whatnot, and then uh, uh, along comes bigger projects, and we also, I was dealing with partnerships. Uh, I, uh, okay, there, Brian, honestly. Uh, if you don't have someone to share things with, you ain't got much. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, uh, partnerships was always, I thought, a good way to go. It's fun. All right, but uh, here's this. Uh, okay, now you know what interest rates were on 90-day loans in the late uh, uh, 70s? Well, according to what I just read in your book, it was probably, it was the, the what about, around 10%? Oh, no, 8. 8%, sorry. 8%, yeah, yeah. In, in, in the late 70s. All right, now along comes 1881. What happened? They went through the roof. Prime peaked at 21.5. Wow. And stayed that way for 18 months. That's a lot. Now, do you know the definition of prime? Prime is what? That's, the, that's not what the banks lend at. That's what, and that's, is the, what the government sets it at? No, no. Okay. No, no. Prime rate is the, the rate that they charge their best customers. The banks. Now, I've been doing these banks. seminars all over the United States and Canada for over 20 years, and I've asked people there, uh, are you a prime customer of a bank? Hmm. I only met one, and I think he was lying. Hmm. Uh, that's what they tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I'm not prime. Uh -huh. All right, so us uh, peons, we got to pay point and a half over. Right. All right, let's do some third grade arithmetic, 21.5, point and a half. <laughs> Okay. Up to 23. I got charged, I got caught on a half million bucks at 23% wow. interest. Now, uh, that went up from eight. Yes. Uh, now that's painful. <laughs> it changes your perspective significantly. Well, uh, in agonizing over all this stuff, I just, I said, you know, I can get the money at five, six, and eight percent guaranteed from three different life insurance companies because I had been a believer in life insurance. But uh, the cold hard fact, you see, I wasn't paying anywhere near the amount of premiums that I should be paying. Now, uh, to, in today's funny money uh, numbers, it doesn't want to impress you at all. But back in those days, uh, I was paying 18000 a year premium. Yeah, but I uh, see, I was paying, uh, what's the third grade, but the, about seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year interest that I wasn't expecting to pay. Right. And what I saw, that uh, I had a contractual uh, arrangement with uh, life insurance companies. Everybody does. When you buy life insurance, uh, they've got to put that money to work somewhere. Right. And in my book, I point out three different examples of that, but of course there's all kind of others. But uh, you outrank everybody in access to what could be lent from uh, your particular system of policies. All right, so what I saw is I had to crank up a premium big time. Now, I- You'd, Why? Why? To get, yeah, why? Yes, 
Yeah, yeah to, to build up cash value is that I could borrow from, from my bank. At a way less interest rate yeah, than five, what six, eight, Yeah, 8%, mostly, for most of them. And from that, I could pay off the snakes and dragons and never see them anymore. And so uh, it, it took me 13 years to get rid of those so-and-sos. And, -sos. and uh, I ran a genealogy check on them. They're not, they're not very nice folks. <laughs> it's canine <laughs> the ancestry in their lineage. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, once you get those folks out of your life, it is such a pleasant uh, te te test, shucks, stress-free way of life, uh, peaceful. Uh, now, I've been doing seminars all the United States and Canada through sponsors. I do not set up a sponsor, uh, a seminar. Oh, about, oh, now I guess it's seven, eight years ago now, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Thousand Oaks area, high rent district. Oh, by the way, that's another lie. There wasn't that then a Thousand Oaks there. There's only 972 I counted. I'm a forester, remember? <laughs> All right. Now, the, the uh, sponsor was Arkady Milgram, a uh, Russian Jew. Been here since 1989, came here with $100 in his pocket. That's all he could take out of Russia. He's done extremely well. Never discovered the life insurance business until about 10 years ago. He had 25 Russians there and about 20 of us USA types. And halfway through the seminar, I'm telling the, the group what a peaceful, stress-free way of life it is when you get the banks out of your life. And I wanted to like and hit my feeble brain about that time. I said to myself, good grief, what a fantastic opportunity I have. Right there in front of me is a lady doctor from Russia, a neurologist. I'm going to pick her brain right in front of everybody. I have no earthly idea what that woman's going to say. She didn't know me. I don't know her. I'm going to take a chance. Doctor, what part does stress play in medical maladies? Her response, it all starts there. Hmm. I asked the group. In your life, and in your life of your peers that you see out there, what do you see is the biggest stress factor? Brown and Chorus came back. Money? Mm. So that's what be, be, becoming your own banker is all about. Right. Getting you those stress. guys out here. And you, now when you do that, you see, you have minimized the effect of the puppet masters out there. Uh, you know, how old are you? 38. All right, now I'm 87 and a half. Uh, I have seen a, a radical change in the time that I've been on this earth. Uh, do you know what a second lieutenant pay was in 1952? No idea. Uh, $213.75 a month, every month, whether you needed it or not. Right. Now, $75 uh, uh, housing allowance, $42 food allowance. Now, you know we got along very well compared to anybody else on that. Well, <laughs> what's happened? Uh, you see, uh, my wife uh, uh, says from time to time, uh, oh, aren't things expensive today? Baby, what are you thinking about? Give me a product. Now, give me the price. Now, whatever the price of that product is today, I want you to divide it by five. And think about we were married uh, 66 years ago. Everything would pop into focus. Uh, I remember uh, very well uh, uh, buying, uh, okay, I worked in a produce store uh, in college to work my way through school. I paid for it all. Uh, and bananas were 16 cents a pound. Multiply by five, there ought to be 80 cents a pound. Bananas gone down. Uh, now, uh, everything out there except health, education, and welfare, that five factor will fit. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we come up with the health, education, and welfare? Things that should never have happened. Uh, Walter E. Williams, you know who he is? Mm -hmm. Fantastic uh, economist at uh, George Mason University, Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, he's a uh, well, maybe six or seven years younger than me, but uh, he's uh, very well known as a, as a columnist 
uh, and uh, he can cut through the nonsense so fast and make your head swim. He's a black guy. Uh, he says that health, education, and welfare should never have happened. I feel like this is a rabbit trail, but I'm going to go down it anyway. Why? 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 Sh what do you mean they should never have happened? Like, well, why should it be a government program? Well, so, not that they should never happen. Why should it be a government program? Yeah, well, okay, yeah. Gotcha. Well, you know, that's the way they look at things. Gotcha. No, and you see the same phenomena out there regarding money. When you talk about uh, putting aside money, everybody thinks about 401ks, right. IRAs, that's and right. stuff like that. Government programs. And that is the craziest thing that could possibly happen. That is the easiest money that they can steal. You see, uh, Pocatello, Idaho, a number of years ago, I was doing a seminar, and I was explaining this phenomenon, and I said, uh, maybe 35 years ago, Brazil went out in the boonies and built a new capital city, Brasilia. Now, you can Google it and see it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, where did they get the money, Brian? They confiscated the reserves on all the pension plans. They stole it. And then I went on to say Argentina did the same thing. And, uh, you know, God provides. Uh, there was a young man in the, in the group there that grew up in Buenos Aires. He said to the group, yeah, every five years. <laughs> the fund builds up, got you. Build up, got you. Wow. That is too attractive to uh, uh, politicians and so forth. And all they got to do is take it. That's right. So, okay. so the answer is what? Well, private contract, they can't do that. The law of contracts prevails. You see, life insurance is older than the United States. Uh, and uh, furthermore, uh, all these government programs are a function of the IRS code. Well, how long has the IRS code been around? Not that long. 1913. Uh, all right. Now, look what has happened to money since that time. Mm -hmm. All right. This huge proliferation of money that doesn't exist. Bankers lend money that doesn't exist. That's right. And that's fraud. But people aren't aware of that because they don't think because they've been to government schools. So the answer is being, you can cut through all of this, John. Sure. And be your own banker. Sure. So let's talk, I want to talk about the nuts and bolts of this. Sure. Because we've kind of danced around it a lot. Sure. And what, I mean, just for the, the average person that's listening, everything, everything you're saying, I'm agreeing with, and I'm sure most sensible people would agree with everything you're saying. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. You said earlier, life insurance is the vehicle. Sure. Most people, when they hear the words life insurance, they're running for the hills. Well, yes, but you see, that's uh, what occurred at the end of WW2. Uh, now, uh, Here's all these GIs getting off of active duty and so forth, several million and so forth. I, I've forgotten exactly the number. But uh, the socialists who were in charge of things at that time said, oh, that's going to ruin the economy. Well, that was not so, but they were in charge and so forth. They said, we got to give them something to do to, to transition into the economy over a period of time. So let's send them to college. Uh, not only that, that will increase our intellectual uh, capital, and so we're going to kill two birds with one stone. Right. But what were the actual results of it? The colleges became diploma mills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've got the ridiculous situation out there that's going on today. Uh, do you know who Jordan Peterson is? No, sir. Well, everybody needs to know. Jordan Peterson, uh, on YouTube, you can find him easily. He's a... Uh, a, uh, and he's a, wait, 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 I've got to get his term. He's a, uh, hmm, clinical psychologist. Okay. All right, uh, brilliant, brilliant man. And he says all over YouTube, uh, and uh, he says academia is a basket case today. There's no way this is going to work. The price is going out of sight there. But everybody is fixated on that. But the worst thing is, is the nonsense they put in the heads of the kids. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, as a result of uh, uh, this, and it's in, I'm in college, uh, 1948 through 52. There were more GIs in, on, in uh, college at that time than any other time. Now, uh, those guys lived high on the hog comparison to the beyond. Uh, they drove cars. Well, I walked. Uh, uh, 
Now, uh, they had uh, a stipend to live on. Well, I had two jobs to work my way through and uh, so forth, plus ROTC. And uh, all right, now, uh, along came more uh, financial genius than in all history combined. Uh, Harvard MBAs have screwed up more of this world than all the rest of the world put together. Uh, I've been there, done that, uh, you know, interface with these people and saw that it is absolutely hopeless. I tried to teach uh, this concept to the uh, uh, world headquarters of, of uh, Equitable Life, which was the third largest life insurance company at that time. I had access to the very top. And uh, I spent five years trying to get them to understand this, and I gave up in disgust because they were just eaten up with the idea of being everything to everybody and getting involved in government programs. And uh, they ruined a real good company. Axa out of France had to uh, bail them out because of this uh, crazy thinking and so forth. Well, you see, uh, after that five years of experience, and I realized that's hopeless, I said, now Nelly, uh, apparently you don't think either. Uh, I should have learned this in academia, particularly forestry school, because Brown, uh, a $50 million addition to a paper mill is uh, nothing uh, to produce a product that you blow your nose on and throw in the trash can. I said, no, thing. everything is done there is OPM, other people's money. Right. Right. If this were Charlton first forestry school, uh, we'd re uh, revolutionize the world. And then I said to myself, now look, boy, uh, the dean over there at Georgia at that time, you were in the first class he taught back in uh, 1949. Uh, uh, call him. You get an interview based on that relationship. Strap that airplane on your back, go over there and spend the day with him, run this by him. If he rides into the occasion, then let's establish a chair that would do nothing but teach it. But all he was interested in, how much you going to give the alumni society this year? I'm retiring next year. <laughs> Nevertheless, I was stupid enough to pursue that possibility for two more years. Finally found out that if I give them a quarter million dollars, they'd let me teach this. Mm -hmm. Brian, they should have been giving me a quarter million dollars. Okay. You see how backward all this stuff is? Just top-down, ridiculous thinking. I totally agree with everything you're saying. I'm. How do we how do we use this concept well, when, it, when it comes to got, whole life insurance? First thing you got to do is you read the book several times. Now there are folks out there. Two is not enough. No, no. But there are several folks that read it 30, 35 times and said they learned something new every time they went through it. Now the next thing that you got to do is find one of our practitioners that's been through our course of study and uh, so forth and. Uh, uh, because they know this stuff and uh, they're a good uh, uh, learning facilitators and you know as I didn't say teachers. Practitioners such as Mike Schwally and John Blaylock and Jordan Cole from Nallin and Associates that, that, who, who that, sponsor that, our club by the way. That, that sounds pretty good starting point right there. <laughs> yes, sir. You gotta have someone who knows and will, it will not go polluting uh, the idea. But you see, well, so talk about that for a second. What do you mean by polluting the idea? All so, right. Well, there's because I want to go down this road. So there's obviously because okay, I, I want to just kind of tell you my experience. Uh -huh. well, let's talk oh, about then, my experience. Yeah, let's, let's hear what I've you got. Did. I've got a bad life experience, life insurance experience. Uh -huh. But what a surprise! So <laughs> when you say, "Look, I, I really want to take this all almost all the way back to your story." Yeah, where you discovered this out of necessity out of a need you had a need you your back was against the wall stress-filled life because you were you owed so much money because interest rates right you f founded this concept to take whole life insurance that you already had mm -hmm. borrow against it yeah. at what, what were you saying five six eight five, percent six, interest eight percent, yeah eight percent interest versus the 23 percent that sure. you were having to borrow at sure. you're borrowing against your own life insurance policy. Yes. What happens next? What happens then? You've borrowed against this and you're going to have to pay it back. I paid off the snakes and dragons and then you pay off the policy loan. We do not have any loans of any kind. Of, of any kind. 
That's stress-free. It's incredible how little it takes to live on if you don't uh, uh, have the banks in your life. You're saying that all the interest we're paying, that we won't have to pay that because we're we have our own. We're basically you're not paying it to somebody else. You're paying it to yourself. You're paying it to yourself. You're so let's talk about that. Because I want I want like what what does that mean? You're, what do you mean what do you mean when you say you're paying it to yourself? I'm just, I guess I just want to talk about for a second the nuts okay. and bolts of the, okay. how it actually works. Uh, I own the policies. Correct. All right. The life insurance company is nothing but my, my administrators. Okay. okay. See, uh, one of my practitioners uh, came up with this analogy quite some time ago. Uh, he uh, suddenly realized that this is just a, uh, like a trust, isn't it? He says a trust has a uh, grantor, a trustee, and a, uh, a beneficiary. Now, the trust did not exist until the grantor created it. Right. He created something out of thin air, so forth. All right, now he has to put property into it uh, to uh, accomplish his goal. Now, it, uh, the, all the property goes to the trustee. It's the trustee's property now. He doesn't own it anymore. Got that? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Now, the trustee has an obligation to put that property to work to carry out the, the intentions of the grand dog. Now, he can put that property to work any number of places, but one place he can't put it to work is with the grand dog. Got that? Yes, sir. Now, in comes income from the trustee's uh, activity. Well, uh, who's it? It's, the, it's going to the trustee. Now, have you ever heard anybody say, look how much money that trustee is making? No. No way. To the contrary, what do they accurately say? They say, look how good that trustee is doing for the benefit of those other two parties. Mm -hmm. Now, if that weren't true, Brian, no one would ever create a trust. Right. All right, now, do you see the analogy? A little you bit. Un well, you understand that this becoming your own banker here, uh, what you got to do is you got to have somebody to, to hold your hand and teach you, you know, all this stuff because the world is out there telling you uh, nonsense. Uh, and uh, once you re be able to recognize nonsense, that's what the most important thing is going out there. But that's not the nature of human beings. The nature of human beings is to, to be attracted by nonsense. I mean, the scriptures is all about that. Right. Yeah. All right, now, uh, so um, when you do this, you created a microcosm, you created a, an aquarium and so forth. You're not dealing with those other folks out there at all. Now, you got to do this incrementally. You can't do it all at one time. It takes a while. Remember, it took me 13 years to get rid of the banks. Now, from, once, from the time that you founded this, yes, to, because you had yeah. to pay off some of the other debt and to get... Sure. Yeah, uh, I'll have to give you a piece of paper that uh, substantiates, substantiates all this, and I will through these guys. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. And right. maybe we can get it out to our audience as well. Yeah. But before we go, I, I want to ask you, there's a couple other things that I found in the book just to be really just interesting mm -hmm. statements um, that I kind of want you to, to kind of um, elaborate on a little bit. I love what you said here, and I think that um, a lot of people don't really understand what this means just at, at face value, so I want you to explain it. You say in your book, all money is borrowed. Sure. All money is borrowed. Yeah. Yeah. You're either paying interest or you're giving up interest. That understanding is only 300 years old, that's all. Richard Candy mm -hmm. in Europe. <laughs> well, it's brand new to me and a lot of uh, yeah, well, people you know, that aren't yeah, edu as educated. You, know, you went to government schools, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. University of Alabama. <laughs> well, uh, I went to uh, University of Georgia because it was walking distance. Not, not so much forth. better. Well, uh, but I got over it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm not there yet. Yeah. Well, again, in forestry school, I did learn some good stuff there, but there was also an awful lot of nonsense. And For sure. So uh, they, that, that's what brought me face to face with the, uh, the devastating effects of of uh, socialism that I didn't realize how much uh, 
Forrester was eating up with uh, socialism out there. But see, uh, what, what Forrester School did teach me one was to think long range. Mm -hmm. I think uh, 70 years down the road, well, I'm already 87 and a half, and you know, I ain't gonna be here all that much longer. Well, neither are you, so what? I'm not gonna be here that much longer. <laughs> That's right. And so, so life's plan, a mist, right? Plan, plan is if you're gonna live forever, live as if you're gonna die today right. is a pretty good idea. Right. Now, the other thing is that I learned was uh, classification. We had more courses in classification than you could snake shake a stick at. Dendrology, the study of classification of trees, it lasted all year long. Hmm. Uh, there were at least, uh, I guess, probably six other courses out there that involved classification. Uh, and I never made less than an A in a course that involved classification. You classify things on the basis of the major characteristics, not incidentals. But you see, out there in the world that we got going on there, that people are, are, are listening to incidentals and things of that nature. They're not looking at what the thing really is. So uh, that was my blessing uh, that uh, I did get uh, from college, but uh, a lot of that other stuff was absolutely worthless. Right. Yeah. So just the the fact that you know we're but all money is borrowed. Mm -hmm. We're we're paying interest, and I think that this this really t obviously it ties into the whole life insurance policy that you're speaking of, to where you can borrow against it versus going out and either paying interest on something or buying something and giving up that money that you have, giving up the opportunity to earn interest with that money. And that's where this whole policy kind of comes to fruition, I guess. Can you, can you, exp can you expand on the nuts and bolts of that just a little bit, just for, just for the people? Because we're, we're definitely gonna get now and Associates involved, um, make sure that you guys have their, their contact information, the practitioners, you guys can actually like get with them and, you want to learn more about this we're going to get their information here in a second but just like i'm curious i'm interested i want to know you got you got me interested what's my next step get your feet wet uh you know tackle something like uh one particular thing in life like never financing a car now once you get past one of those you can you can mushroom in a hurry so, so I was startled as to how fast I was able to pay off the banks. It, it shocked me. Uh, when you say never finance a car, so what, let's just use a car as an example. I'm either going to go and finance it yeah. or I'm going to go pay cash for it. And you're saying both. Neither one of those is okay. the right way. Well, you see, let's talk about the noise that's out there. You know Dave, who Dave Ramsey is? Yes, sir. You know who Susie Allman is? Yes, sir. Uh, see, Dave Ramsey uh, said life insurance is the worst thing in the world, and Susie Oman is worse than that, and so forth. But uh, here they are out there, and uh, Dave Ramsey's uh, got a $7 million house and a seven-car garage and stuff like that. Uh, all right, look, uh, there is a, uh, uh, a uh, marketer here in town. I'm not going to tell you who he is and so forth, but uh, back when I uh, first produce my book, I didn't call on him, he called on me after somebody had recommended he do so. After about three sessions over a period of about three months, uh, he said, uh, I can make you very wealthy, but you gotta be able to compromise your principles. Tell half truths. Mm -hmm. People will throw money at you if you tell half truth. Mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey's half truth. All right, you, you know I'm an aviator, do you? Yes, sir. All right, I've been flying airplanes 71 years. Yes, there aren't too many of us around. Now, look, I learned back there at the very beginning, you can't fly an airplane through a vacuum, okay? It's got to go through an environment. Now, let's go back and uh, recognize what I pointed out some time ago from my own research, and I've had other folks that uh, try to uh, attack it, and they find out that I'm understating the case that uh, if you uh, take the average person in America, uh, if he, you got a dollar to spend, 35 cents is going to interest alone. Mm -hmm. to somebody else's mm -hmm. bank. Now, uh, so let's say he's saving 10% of what he makes. That's a 35 to 10 ratio, isn't it? 35 negative, 10 positive. 
Yes, sir. All right, now let's get that in the airplane world. Let's move the decimal one place right. The airplane now is 100 miles an hour, okay? Now, you're in that airplane and you want to go to Chicago, do you know? The only trouble is that uh, here comes a high off the left coast. Now, the highs is good weather. The highs, in, you, you know that? Yes, sir. This highs and low. The highs turn clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Okay. Southern hemisphere is reversed. All right. Uh, and uh, the lows of bad weather, they turn counterclockwise. All right, so here's this high that came in off the left coast. It sent over, over western Kansas. And uh, you uh, want to go to Chicago, you got a 350 mile an hour headwind. Right. And your airplane can run a 100 mile an hour airspeed. Oh, your airplane's going to going backwards. Cuba, going Cuba, going to going to Cuba at 250 miles an hour. Well, that's that's what America is doing. Mm. Well, here comes Dave Ramsey. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. Get out of debt. Well, I, I totally agree. All right, the air mass moved on. They all do. There are no exceptions. Now the high is centered over Indianapolis. There is no wind in that center of that uh, uh, high. You get in that airplane, you cover the ground at 100 miles an hour. And uh, the the, uh, the arrival syndrome sets in. Then, whee, we're making progress. You just can't do no better than this. That's what Dave Ramsey said. Well, this has never occurred to Dave Ramsey or any of these other financial geniuses out there. Let the air mass move on. Now it's centered over Washington, D.C. You have a 350 mile an hour tailwind pushing a 100 mile an hour airplane, you get to Chicago in a hurry. It's the same airplane. What do you mean by let it move on? The air mass moves on. Okay, what you're doing here uh, uh, as it relates to the financial world that I'm trying to describe, you are, you are building a business. Right. You are capitalizing a business there that you will never see those so-and-sos again in your life. And so, it's ridiculously simple. But we have so much nonsense going on out there that people can't see this. So you're saying just give it time and that nonsense will subside? Oh, no. No, to the contrary. You've got to be able to recognize the noise. You've you got to classify it correctly, what it is. All right, and now... Uh, John uh, works a lot of farmers and so forth, and he's got this uh, agent friend up in uh, North Dakota. Uh, she's written a book uh, about the, the, the farming business and so forth and so uh, You know the thing about growing corn, Brian? I'm from Indiana. All right, you do know what corn is. <laughs> I know what real corn is. All right, well, you, <laughs> you uh, till the soil and so forth and prepare it, and you plant corn. Yeah, but you always gonna get something else you didn't intend to plant. No, always. Hmm? Yes, sir. What is it? Uh, it wh where we are, oh, weeds. All right. <laughs> well, I was gonna <laughs> say something else. Well, you yeah. didn't plant weeds. You didn't plant weeds, but you got them. You're gonna get a lot of stuff you don't plant. Yes, yeah, all right. <laughs> now, let's suppose that you have a huge crop of weeds at point where you can hardly see the corn. Huge crop of weeds, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, if you get rid of the weeds, doesn't the corn stand out like a sore thumb? Yeah, probably so. The biggest problem out there is learning how to classify uh, nonsense that's out there because the world is just eaten up with nonsense. Gotcha. We have more financial geniuses per square foot out there today than all of history put together. Mm -hmm. They know everything. That's right. And they're totally unteachable. They got to discover a little bit of this yeah. sort of stuff, that's all. Yeah. And the best way to discover some of the stuff is to get in touch with the practitioners that you mentioned earlier. And like like I mentioned, um, we're, first of all, very, very thankful for Nallin and Associates, for Mike, John, Jordan, you guys coming to our meetings, um, being there amongst um, the people. If you are not coming to our Allery meetings that are the second Thursday night of every single month, at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Homewood. If you're not coming, maybe you don't live here, maybe you didn't know about it until just now, definitely come. But if you're not from here, aren't you guys, you operate in pretty much every state in the country. So anyone that's listening to this podcast, 
Guys, I highly recommend that you check out Nallen and Associates, and we're going to put um, all their information, contact information in the show notes so you guys can just click on email addresses, um, click on their website so you can get in touch with them and learn more about this concept that Nelson has been um, so gracious enough to share with us today. Um, can't thank you enough for coming on the show and coming in and sharing your experience and sharing your stories. We really do appreciate that. I don't take that lightly, and I hope that our audience doesn't either. So we appreciate you, Nelson. Well, you got to understand that when I first discovered all this that uh, I tried to suppress the thought uh, for uh, as much as two years. Uh, but I know what Moses Burning Bush is all about. It wouldn't go out. Yes, sir. And uh, finally, uh, it was uh, kind of like two before across the eyes. Uh, uh, I put something in your head bone that not another folks with head bone. Right. You got a job to do, get with it. And so this is an obligation. Yeah. The book is Becoming Your Own Banker, mm-hmm. Unlock the Infinite Banking Concept with best-selling international author yes, and speaker. It's in 30, uh, yes, that man. book's in 30, uh, 31 countries, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It sold over 4,000 copies. So. We will link up uh, where people can get a copy of this. We'll link that up. I'm, I'm sure we can get it on Amazon and and such like that. Well, so, best place to get it from uh, the best place to get Nallin, it is from Nallen. That's yeah, right, Nallen Associates. Get yeah. it from uh, from Mike and John and Jordan. Um, we'll hook up. We'll put all their information. Um, we'll also put the Amazon link in there just in case you guys. One want more to comment here: yes, nobody elevates themselves much above the environment in which they operate. So Nallen is a great uh, financial environment. Uh, uh, stick with the good environment there, and you learn how to recognize what nonsense looks like. There you go. Absolutely. I agree with that. Nelson, again, we thank you so, so much for your time um, and for your knowledge. We do appreciate you coming on the show. Guys, we love you so much, and we hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. What do you think? Not too painful, huh? Oh, they said that uh, you were supposed to give me a thousand dollars when we got paid. Thousand? I have to. I have to. I owe you. I have to get people into my policy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>